On this week's Writing Wednesday, we continue with The Wedding, book 10 of the Ramsley Brothers series. When we left off last week, Kitty was reevaluating her feelings for Ben. This week, Mary confronts Ben about Kitty's presence at the wedding weekend. Mary doesn't like Kitty and has gotten the impression her son has hired Kitty through an escort service for the weekend. Stay tuned to find out more. Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, share, or bell to be notified for new videos. And let's get writing! And welcome back. So, once again, we're just doing the continuation of last week's week five um, video. And we'll be writing today with some very new information. Um, Mary, who is Ben's mother, is a bit of a stickler for propriety, which is interesting because she's married to the laid-back Oliver, but apparently opposites and perhaps money attract. <laughs> One can never say with uh, the history of some people. So we're starting off back again at the gym scene where, um, well, someone was apparently going to ask Ben for breakfast and maybe a little bit more, and Kitty intervened for the clueless Ben, but she's not so clueless. She's she's starting to feel a little possessive of her friend and realizes that uh, ex that lady was definitely going to hit on him, or maybe she was hitting on him already. So uh, Kitty jumps in with um, a fake ailment. I'm sorry, Ben, but could we cut this short? Asked Kitty, ignoring the woman beside her. I'm not feeling very well. And Ben is... You know, he realizes the situation's a little odd, but he's agreeable. So he shut off his machine and quickly sanitizes it, as one does when one is at the gym. Why doesn't your friend go to her room and lie down? Asked the blonde with concern as fake as her eyelashes. I'm all alone in the hotel, and I was wondering if you might like to have breakfast with me. Yeah, she's all alone, and she wants more than breakfast. Maybe she wants to eat him for breakfast. Uh, but Ben, as always, is not socially adept. <laughs> so, if you'll excuse me, Ben gave her a confused look. I'm going to see my friend upstairs. Kitty shot the blonde a triumphant look as Bren... Yeah, sorry, Ben threw the cleaning cloth into the appropriate bin, as one does again at the gym. She grabbed onto Ben's arm as they exited the gym. She was a little odd, remarked Ben. Do you need anything from the gift shop? Sometimes they have medications there if you don't happen to bring any. And Kitty didn't bother explaining. The woman had been angling for more than breakfast. The whole episode had seemed to gone over Ben's head. Once he lost a few more pounds, she had the feeling she might be fighting off all sorts of women. It was a little depressing. So Kitty and Ben, as we stated in the previous video, they are friends. Um, they are working toward becoming more than friends right now. Uh, he has a crush on her that she doesn't know about. And she's starting to realize that she has feelings for him. She's been helping out Ben since uh, Nate's death and has been trying to get him in better shape, taking over his um, food schedule so that uh, he's eating healthier and doing well. Kitty had just been about to confess that she was feeling fine when they ran into Mary, Ben's mother. Kitty had been getting mostly a cold shoulder from the impressive woman for the weekend. She didn't know what she might have done to deserve the attitude Mary had been giving her, but she hoped by the time the weekend was over to get into Ben's mother's good graces. Hello, Mary. Mary looked her over from sweaty head to sneakered feet. Again, they'd been working out at the gym. They're best to go upstairs, you know, each have a shower and get ready for the day. Finding her wanting, she turned her attention to Ben, so basically she's giving her as they would say in the old romance times, the cut direct. You know, looked at her and then turn away and talk to somebody else. It's very rude. But uh, Mary, Mary definitely can be rude when she wants to be. And unfortunately for Kitty, that is Ben's mother. Benjamin, I think it's time we had a discussion on your choice of company for the weekend. Excuse me? Question to surprise Ben. Kitty blinked at Mary's tone. I'm sorry if I have given any offense. Offense? 
your very existence at this vent is an offense said mary or sniffed mary she lowered her voice well this woman is quite snotty and a little bit nasty but that's her character um she's gotten very used to being where she is in society she is the wife of a man who owns a chain of hotels so mary is very used to a certain measure of affluence especially in the charity world and society in general and that has come down lately because her husband has been involved in a money laundering scheme and some other illegal activities and he's now in prison and will be charged and is facing time so it brings her cachet in society down and i would imagine it all that is very um kind of i wouldn't say alarming to her but it's definitely a bit of a shock to her and you know when people lose control of situations especially a-type personalities we tend to i am an a-type personality we tend to spiral and or we tend to grasp and try to keep more control over things that are not necessarily in our business to control so uh, in this case she also has a history with her husband of oscar um having lady friends and having affairs and doing things that he probably shouldn't ever have done as a married man and uh, so that has also colored her experience in this particular case so um yes excuse me questioned a surprise ben kitty blinked at mary's tone i'm sorry if i've given you any offense offense your very existence at this event is an offense sniffed mary she lowered her voice really ben bringing an escort to a weekend wedding is this what it's come to she's not even a high-end escort brining not bringing brining i'm gonna have to change that obviously we've caught another spelling error that uh, actually the program does not catch because it is a word even though it's not grammatically in the right spot so mary continues i had to suffer your father's many infidelities so that gives again our readers and audience a chance to realize that uh, she has a history which has perhaps colored her perception of uh, present day events i am not going to suffer you openly consorting with prostitutes in front of the family so in other words if you uh do it behind closed doors that's your own business but uh, out in front of the family where everybody can see it no 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 so that's kind of a f interesting and funny attitude for her to have kitty's jaw dropped she had no words for what mary had just said mom kitty is my friend defended ben i asked her to be here and now um mary and all her misguided ways is going to associate Ben's choice of company with his particular income and if you can hear a dog in the background kudos to you she's on my lap again trying to snore and be distracting <laughs> so uh, this is probably an indication of your income tutted Mary as she ignored what Ben had just said yeah Mary's not really the type of woman who listens to her children even though her children are now all grown-ups you don't make enough money to pay for class so even though she's objected to him bringing the escort before the family she also objects to his choice of escort in expensiveness or lack thereof if you would just stop with that silly company of yours i'm certain henry and garrett would hire you henry and garrett are ben's brothers and they are in charge of the Ramsley Hotel chain. You could have a nice, comfortable life with Ramsley Hotel. Well, they are luxury hotels. I'm sure they could afford a very nice salary, but that's not necessarily what he wants to do. There was absolutely no need for you to try to do this modern thing of becoming an entrepreneur. It's a fad, and obviously you aren't doing well. Don't worry, I will talk to Garrett on your behalf. I'm sure you can come up with a suitable position. So Mary is, again, a little micromanaging and likes things up to her standards. Not everybody else's. She's a bit of a controlling lady. 
Um, which is funny because at the same point, she would turn a blind eye to certain behaviors because I suppose she thinks that it's suspect expected not suspected expected in her position in life which we've already had a bit of a taste of that when rachel talked about david's infidelities and what she was expected to turn a blind eye to now <laughs> we also know that james and um oh who's james's wife dotty didn't have the best marriage either when it comes to fidelity and yet Nothing on Robert and Beverly. I'm assuming, and this is funny because I'm the writer, but the characters always tell me who they are and what they want. So I am assuming that um, Robert and Beverly were faithful to each other and uh, have had a loving relationship, which is good. But yeah, kind of sad that uh, the other ones didn't. But maybe again, maybe that's partially David's influence in their lives as well, since they are his brothers, and uh, he did take Oscar with him to various um, side shenanigans when he got married, and yes, um, more than once as a polygamist that he is, um, and Oscar did witness these things and never really said anything, so that's, that's an unfortunate influence in his life. Perhaps he influenced James's life a little bit too much, too. Obviously, he influenced the rest of their lives when it came to partaking in the illicit gains of the drug trade and laundering these money through their family businesses. Okay, back to our scene. I'm happy with my job, Ben drew in a frustrated breath. I don't want to work for Ramsley Hotels. Mom, you need to apologize to Kitty. So I'm thinking this is a very much an old argument between Ben and his mother, and Ben tries to be respectful because he's been raised to be respectful, mostly. But again, he has no reason to work for Ramsley Hotels. He has his own business. He's quite happy with it. And at least he's trying to stick up for Kitty a little bit, considering he is a quiet person who doesn't tend to enjoy confrontation in his personal life. Apologize to that tart? Question Mary in shock. Why would I? You should be ashamed for even thinking of bringing her here. Mrs. Ramsley, Kitty inserted herself into the conversation. Well, Kitty is one who would not stand back. She's a bit more of a fighter. I am not a hired woman. That's a very polite way to say prostitute. Uh, I am Ben's friend. We've been friends for six years. I hardly think, began Mary, but Kitty cut her off. Ben is the best guy that I know. He is amazing and would never disrespect you or his family by bringing, what did you call me, a prostitute or escort to a family event, defended Kitty with a small amount of heat. See, Kitty is, uh, this is what we would call like a testimony to another person's character, so another character's character in this case. Uh, nice play on words. And so she is defending him, but she's also saying exactly what she thinks of him. And it's a very nice moment for Ben because I don't think Ben gets defended very much. So this, this will play into their relationship as well. Also, Ben is happy with his work. He might not make as much as his brothers or be in the family business, but he enjoys what he does. So she assumes that Ben is not making as much as his brothers. She is making an assumption as to his income, which she doesn't really know. She knows that he pays his bills. She knows that, uh, you know, his bills aren't very exorbitant, but he seems to do okay. Uh, how many people enjoy their job? Ben has a comfortable income, pays his bills, and is happy. Why would you want to change that? I can't believe any mom would rather make their kid would rather their kid make a bunch of money and be miserable. Not saying that Ben would be miserable at the hotel, but it's not his thing, right? He's very much into technology and how to use technology for different purposes. And uh, he enjoys his job. Ben, are you going to let her speak to me like that? An offended Mary asked her son. So you see, it's not that Mary even 
un like heard what Kitty said. It was more of the tone that it was delivered and who it was delivered by. So to her, she's like, this woman is disrespecting me. She's not, not, um, giving me the respect that I'm due. She's speaking back to me and I am an authority over her when it comes to the information. So Kitty right there is at a bit of a disadvantage because sometimes people, even though you have conversations with them or you have arguments with them, logic does not prevail. This is an emotional argument with Mary. She believes that she's right and that's all there is to it. Oh, look, we're looking for Tristan's name. And the reason we're looking at Tristan's name is this is um, Kitty's previous boyfriend. And we are looking to see, um, I believe we're searching for his last name. Just in case I had put a last name in and I wanted to change his last name or at least keep it consistent. But it looks like Tristan has no last name. So that's something that you can always do. Um, if you hit control F, it will bring up the navigation bar. That's just a shortcut key. Or you can just, um, I think it would be in review or view, or you can just hit the, in the little search that you see at the very top with the magnifying glass, that little bar at the top in the ribbon. You could put in navigation in there or find, and you can look for different things in your MS um, manuscript, your Word document. So I needed a name and, um, <laughs> we went in with Ryer's Den off the top of my head. I might be changing that. I have no idea. I'm basically looking for a name that sounds important. So we'll see if I choose something else or if we stick with it. Now, let's see where we are. Here, um, we had a small little glitch. I don't know if you noticed it. But when I tried to put in how you have been hanging out for her son, Tristan, it uh, just didn't want to align properly. So it took a bit to make Word document, put it how the rest was formatted. Anyhow, where were we? Oh, yes. Are you going to let her speak to me like that? An offended Mary asked her son. Ben sighed. We have had this argument many times, Mom. So you can see this is an old thing um, about his job. He's kind of changing the the uh, subject a little bit so he doesn't have to confront her a little bit over what she's calling Kitty. I'm not going to work for Ramsley Hotels. I like my work and I have no interest in changing careers. So you notice right there we've got work and then the very next sentence, work, so we're going to have to put in a new synonym for that and change that up when we do our editing. See, this is why, again, brining, work, work. These are examples of why you go over and you edit your first draft yet again and again and again. Um, just simple little things like this can up your writing game. Just making sure that you actually are not repeating words too much. Another word that I have a problem with is usually that. I put a lot of that's into my manuscripts and then I have to fix them <laughs> later on in the editing process. So yes, again, he has, uh, he's not going to work for Ramsley Hotels. I like my job uh, or career or whatever other synonym employment and I have no interest in changing careers. So we have careers already. We don't want to put careers twice, especially in one sentence. What Kitty said is the truth. The truth harumped Mary as she eyed Kitty. I think that harumped is a very telling um, sort of huh, conveys a lot of disbelief and uh, discussed. I spoke to Hilda Ryerston, and like I said, Ryerston, I'm not sure if I'm keeping that or not. We'll see. She told me, I do like Hilda though, it just conveys a certain, certain um, persona. You know how you get names that are associated with certain, yes, that's my dog again, in the background, snoring. Sorry about that. 
you'll notice that you get certain names that are attached to sort of certain personas and certain characteristics and you can just immediately go oh yeah they're that sort of person mm -hmm. yes it does happen in real life sorry people she told me how you've been hanging out for her son tristan making absolute spectacle of yourself and it is absolutely shameful again we've got absolute twice in the same sentence you can see where i go wrong here that's why this is a first draft and we will go back and we will find a synonym that is appropriate and insert it probably for the first one and then go from there i could also take it out and just say you're making a spectacle of yourself and it is absolutely shameful but it's kind of nice to um equalize our what would these be? Adverbs? Adjectives? Spectacle? Shameful? Yeah, I think they'd be adjectives. And, uh, an adverb is a word that describes a verb. An adjective is a word that describes sort of a noun? If I'm correct? It's been a long time since grade four when we learned these things. Yes, I know I should brush up. I am a writer. I should know these things. But anyhow, that's why we keep reading the self-help books and learning things. So uh, it's absolutely shameful how you were basically a kept woman. I don't like that sentence. I might have to say she or Hilda said how you're basically a kept woman. You built Tristan and his parents out of tens of thousands of dollars. I think someone oh exaggerated there. Well, I won't have you digging your claws into the Ramsley family. She basically thinks that Kitty's a gold digger and a prostitute. That's very rude. As I said, I'd expect better of my sons. Well, in public. Behind closed doors, that's another matter entirely. Kitty gasped in disbelief. Mom, Kitty barely makes rent, asserted Ben. She certainly didn't get that kind of money from Tristan. He probably lied so he could get more cash out of his parents. And I wouldn't put it past Tristan to do so, because Tristan is... Yeah, Tristan is Tristan. And for those of you who haven't met Tristan yet, he is a spoiled little rich boy who does lie <laughs> to get what he wants. Um, he's quite foul, actually, and I can't believe she stuck around with him for... Well, Kitty, I should phrase this correctly. I can't believe Kitty stuck around with him for, like, I don't know, five, six years. She's been dating him for a long time. And it is unfortunate because she just kind of got stuck into this relationship and didn't realize that the guy was no good for her or anyone else. So, uh, he probably lied so he could get more cash out of his parents. Again, wouldn't put it past him. And, and Ben's eyes are quite fully open when it comes to Tristan. You're going to believe someone like her over me, demanded Mary. Again, Mary's not willing to listen to anything but her own view. We all know those people. They are there in our lives. It's unfortunate, but they are there. She's one of them. I'm saying that you may only have part of the story, stated Ben calmly. Again, you see, he doesn't really want to confront anyone. He's saying it nicely. He's dancing around the subject. He's a little bit of a coward. Um, <laughs> it's unfortunate, but true. He's trying to be diplomatic. There we go. Ben is trying to be diplomatic. It's not really working very well. Kitty's will will definitely defend herself. I didn't take anyone's money, an upset Kitty stated firmly. See, Kitty will, will go to bat for somebody if she believes an injustice is committed. Ben, Ben's kind of like, well, that really kind of sucks. I mean, I guess I should help out, but uh, let's do this a little more diplomatically. And a little more calmly. So it's good and it's bad. I mean, everybody has their quirks. That's just who he is. I'm not going to stand here and listen to her lie, sniffed Mary. I will see you at the luncheon today. I expect you will have sent her away. So obviously, again, she's ignoring Kitty and expects her own wishes to be adhered to, no matter the logical argument. I'm not sending her away, replied Ben to Mary's retreating back. He ran a hand over his face before turning to Kitty. I need to apologize. No, she needs to apologize. 
Kitty dragged in a breath. You did nothing wrong. At least he did say that he wasn't going to send her away. Well, that was good of him. If you want to cut the weekend short, we can, offered Ben. So he's offering to kind of take um, the easier route, so to speak, but also in deference to Kitty's feelings, he's giving her the option, which is very nice of him that he is giving her that option. Where are we going here? I don't know. I had to look at something. Oh, no, I know what we're doing. We're highlighting our text and we're going to find out how many words we've written so far. So I kind of have a general idea of when to wrap up the chapter. So, when I was doing my previous books, I was doing around 5,000 words in a chapter, and I just found that is too much, especially for narrating. So I'm bringing them down to shorter chapters. So around 3,500 words, I feel, is a comfortable time frame. Now, obviously, some chapters are a little bit smaller. Some chapters are a little bit bigger. I'm just trying to average around 3,500. That way, I have some continuity within the book when it comes to sizing of chapters but also i mean when a scene has all the information it has all the information there's nothing else you can do you can't add to it and sometimes scenes run over because you have to put in all of this information and yes we can cut things down but then sometimes it affects the information that you need to give to your readers um so a scene finishes when it finishes but i try to keep in mind the word count that way i'm not running over or under so you can see right now we're about 61,000 words into our manuscript normally for my other uh, romance books we were doing 50 but this is a special book we've got three sort of viewpoints going on we've actually add more and less as we go so it's important to um to give it a little extra time so we're going to have some more Probably about 10, 15, 20,000 more words. It's going to be a bigger book than normal. So you're getting more bang for your buck when it comes to the wedding. So anyhow, um, do, 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 do. he offers to cut the weekend short because that's very considerate of him. And Kitty took his arm again, steering them towards the elevators. No, we were having a good time, and I like the rest of your family. I'm sorry she seems to have taken a dislike to me. Tristan's mom never liked me either. I guess they talked at some point. Apparently, sighed Ben. As they entered the elevator, thankfully alone. Oh, they entered, not as. They entered the elevator, thankfully alone. Although, I could put an as and put that sentence together very nicely. Um... Either way, it works. It's just a preference. Did you mean what you said about my job? Now, the reason he's asking this is because um, he's been getting a few signals from Kitty, and he's a little worried that she figured out that uh, not only does he come from a loaded family, but he might have some money himself, and therefore he's worried that she's turned her attention from Tristan to him because she sees a windfall. And as much as he likes Kitty, and as much as they are friends, he also is aware of some of her shortcomings. So he is just worried that maybe she doesn't like him for him, but maybe she likes him for the money. Billionaire first world problems, huh? I mean, I think as, as a person who is rich... That is definitely something that you would be concerned about in every relationship. I mean, how do you trust the person isn't after you for your money? So that has come into play into this particular book. Because I don't feel like it came into play with the other books as much. Anyhow, sure, shrugged Kitty, you love what you do. I can tell. I would never want you to change something that makes you happy just to chase a few more dollars. Your brothers might make more money than you, but if doing what they do doesn't won't make you happy uh, i'd like doesn't as well then you should stay as you are your bills never seem always seem to get paid so it isn't like you are hurting financially sometimes i envy you a little you do asked ben surprised at kitty's admission i wish i had a job that i loved admitted kitty it's not like i don't like working it's just i get paid so little i'm always behind also i don't know what i want to do I'm not talented like you. I just want to have some kids and take care of my own little family. 
So she has some goals that are, you know, they're traditional goals. And in today's age, it's hard sometimes to be a woman who just wants the traditional stuff. And yeah, she would like a man to take care of her. Um, she's not, she feels that being a homemaker and raising children would be more fulfilling to her than having a career. And that's perfectly fine. That's her choice. That's who she is. Rather, you know, other people, it's not a diss on them for getting a career and doing what they like. It's just her personal preference. So she doesn't know what she would want to do as a career. She's just not, not like that. Most people think that's outdated. And it's true. A lot of people do think that's outdated. And some people are even offended by it. I don't know why. It's just everybody has their own role in this world. Somebody has to scrub the toilets. Somebody has to be the mom. Somebody has to be the dad. Somebody has to, you know, be the lawyer or the doctor. Be the taxi driver. Everybody's got their own roles, right? And everybody who loves their roles, no matter what their role is, kudos to them. I think that's awesome. So I think it's nice, mentioned Ben, as they got off the elevator and headed towards their rooms. I think he thinks it's more than nice because, quite frankly, I think he appreciates the fact that uh, she's finally revealed to him that she's not after him for the money, dun, 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 which is awesome. So that gives their relationship a chance to head in a more romantic direction, should he ever maybe get some uh, courage to be with her or maybe she will have to take the initiative who knows i haven't finished the scene we're still working towards that uh, my mom didn't have a career she does charity work but i don't recall her ever having a job so he does um kind of relate it to that there and i think at this point we have nothing much more to add um except that they're you know, going to their rooms, going to get ready for the luncheon. And I'll have to finish off the scene because I really do feel like, um, of course, we are mostly left to the care of the nanny. Yes, that's definitely his childhood. Care of the nanny because I don't think his mom or his dad, well, his dad would have been affectionate, but his mom not so much. So we're going to have to come to some sort of resolution in their relationship. Now, whether that resolution is that the two of them are going to remain friends for now and then possibly have their own future book, or whether we just feature them later on as a couple in other books because they actually take the initiative and become a couple in this by the end of this book. So... That's difficult to say. I haven't quite decided. Um, and here at the end, well, we're not at the end of the scene, but we do see that Kitty is slowly growing up, which is excellent. She's getting a mature, more mature outlook because she thought that she would have um, the lifestyle that she wanted with Tristan, but she's realized since that Tristan isn't any good for her and she doesn't think she was really good for him either, which is very, very true. She wasn't. So Maya and Haley, her friends, were right. I was more in love with the idea of what Tristan represented, or she thought he represented, but he really didn't. So that is finally... She's maturing a little bit. She's she's finally waking up to what people are and what a good relationship might actually entail. So that is very important. We have some character growth for her. We also are going to have a bit of character growth for Ben. And uh, yeah, it's important that your characters have some growth throughout the book, even if they are, you know, whether they're main characters or side characters, but at least... Um, at least it gives them a chance to, you know, for your audience to warm up to them and for them to have their arc, if their character arc, that's what it's called. So anyway, Ben paused outside her door. He hesitated. So you are over Tristan, which is a very good question because he's curious to know 
Thank you for joining me on this week's Writing Wednesday. Check out the links in this video where you can find my books on Amazon, either in the Kindle Unlimited program to purchase as ebooks or as paperbacks. You can also find free audiobooks written and narrated by me on my channel as they are released. And please consider looking at my channel for other videos that you might enjoy. Happy writing and happy listening!